honor yourself and your own desires and your own inclinations and just follow those little sparkly breadcrumbs in your mind of things you're curious about or things you're interested in or things you're good at or things you love to do and only for 15 minutes a day. (laughs) You're listening to Make Some Noise Podcast, episode number 608 with guest Sam Bennett. Welcome to Make Some Noise Podcast, your guide for strategies, tools, and insight to empower yourself. I'm your host, Andrea Owen, global speaker, entrepreneur, life coach since 2007, and author of three books that have been translated into 18 languages and are available in 22 countries. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a lesson that will help you maximize unshakable confidence, master resilience, and make some noise in your life. You ready? Let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, guess what? This is my first intro I've ever recorded in my new place, in my new room, my new office space, my new desk, all of it. So I don't know if the sound is a little bit different. It might be. It might, it might echo a little bit differently, but I'm, I'm super excited to be here. I'll tell you more about it later. Uh, this is my first official week here. My kids are here this week. I'm happy as a clam, happy as a clam. I'm also super happy because one of my favorite people is here on the show today. She's a repeat guest, Sam Bennett. And Sammy has been such an amazing personal friend of mine. She's one of those friends who just knows exactly what to say at the right time. She's incredibly wise and compassionate and just a really great friend but also a brilliant colleague. I believe wholeheartedly in her work. And that's why I'm always excited to have her on. She has a new book coming out that we're going to talk about a little bit. I can't wait to tell tell you a little bit more about her. But first, I do have some openings this summer for private coaching. If you are interested in having some private support with me, yours truly, some one-on-one time, we'll dive deep. Uh, My coaching is for any woman or a man. I have coached some men here and there. And if you are someone who is feeling stuck personally or professionally, I do coach a lot of women in regard to their work stuff. Either way, let's hop on the phone. You can read more about it at andreaowen.com slash links. That's where everything is. That'll tell you which page to go to, to read more about it, fill out an application, and we can hop on the phone for 20 minutes. No obligation. We'll just see what's there. See if I can help you. All right. Let me tell you a little bit about our guest today. Originally from Chicago, Sam Bennett is a writer, speaker, and creativity productivity specialist and the author of the best-selling Get It Done, From Procrastination to Creative Genius in 15 Minutes a Day, which Seth Godin called an instant classic, essential reading for anyone who wants to make a ruckus. And start where, where you are. How Little Changes Can Make a Big Difference for Overwhelmed Procrastinators, Frustrated Overachievers, and Recovering Perfectionists. And her latest book, which comes out this month, June 2024, is called The 15-Minute Method, The Surprisingly Simple Art of Getting It Done. Having spent most of her life working as a professional actor and improviser, Sam brings her quick wit to all her work, including the script she wrote for the hit musical In a Booth at Chassens. Recently, she has leveraged her good-humored and down-to-earth teachings to become a top instructor on LinkedIn Learning with over a million learners worldwide. She now lives happily in an old house with three cats, which is just how she always imagined it might be. So without further ado, here is Sam. Sam Bennett, welcome back. Thanks, Andrea Owen. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I am excited because when I, you know, I've, I've known that you've been writing this book for a minute because you and I are, are friends and colleagues. And the title is brilliant. The 15 minute method, the surprising simple art of getting it done. Let's get her done. Get her done. What I love about your work. One of the things I love about your work is that you you know, obviously we live in America where it's like productivity, productivity, keep going. Do more, do more, do more, do more, do, more. do faster, yeah. do it better. Yeah. But I love how you don't have that approach. Like it's, it's productivity meets compassion. And, and you, I think that you give people permission to just make it easy 
And that's what I love about your work. hundred percent. And also, you know, the thing that I, that I believe about productivity, it's not about getting more done. Uh-huh. It's about getting more of what matters to you done. Yeah. Can you say a little bit more about that? Like, I think that's just a really great segue into some of the questions I have. Yeah. Cause I mean, first of all, you may have noticed we run around all day, every day, getting everything done for everybody. Sure. The things that really matter to us that like would really make a difference in our life, in our business, in our family, in our bodies, in our mind and whatever, like somehow get to the bottom of the list or don't even make it onto the list at all. Right. So, but what I notice is if you spend even just a teensy weensy little bit of time on one of those things, whatever that is for you, writing your book, playing guitar, sitting in the garden, connecting with one of your kids or your animals or your friends or whatever, like all of a sudden the whole rest of the day gets better. It It is a, such a meaningful feeling of accomplishment. It, tell me if you find this with your clients or people that you talk to, I think especially women who are used to having a lot of tasks going on at the same time and are, and are, and are used to being pretty good at multitasking, whether you know the outcome is <laughs> successful or not. But I find that women will put a million things on their to-do list and want to kind of scatter themselves like confetti Mm -hmm. all over the to-do list. And then they don't feel really accomplished. So are you saying that it's better to just like focus on one thing at a time and get a chunk of it done? Is that kind of your advice? Sometimes, sometimes. So first of all, I think we should make a differentiation between multitasking and task switching because multitasking... Yeah. So multitasking is actually sort of great. Multitasking is like when you're doing the dishes and listening to a podcast or, you know, taking a walk and using that time to hang out with your best friend. So you're both taking a walk together or what, like that's doing two things at the same time is something that women are, are great at. Task switching, which is here I am concentrating on, you know, writing the great American novel. And now somebody needs me to make them scrambled eggs. And I have to go off and answer the scrambled egg question. And now I have to come back to this thing. And I have no idea where I was. And I've lost my place. And I've lost my momentum. And I'm exhausted. And I hate everybody. Yeah. So task switching, not so good. Okay. Multitasking, fine. I think it's the task switching that trips people up. Is that fair? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you need to train you know, people treat you the way you train them to treat you. People are running all over you. That's not on them. That's on you. You've done that to you. So you need to retrain them. And remember, only positive reinforcement works. <laughs> retrain them that, you know, when I'm doing my 15 minutes of meditation or I'm doing my 15 minutes of Pilates or I'm doing whatever the hell I want for 15 minutes, no one disturbs me. Genius at work, signs on the door handle yourselves. I've had to learn that as someone that works from home and has worked from home since my children were born. And and sometimes I'm great at this and sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I give in. But when I get interrupted, like if I'm in the middle of something and it's a task I want to complete, I only have like, you know, 20 minutes left of it and I get interrupted. You know, the, the mom part of me wants to say like, oh, just drop everything and go do it. It's not going to take you that long to go do this thing. But I know through experience that coming back to it, and especially as a person with ADHD, like coming back to it is going to take me longer or I might never come back to it and then forget about it. So I will say, this is going to take me another 20 minutes unless it's like an emergency, which it very rarely is. Very rarely. I will do this when I'm done. Okay. And then, you know, it's usually like, okay. And then, and then also it allows me to, it gives me a little bit of a motivation to finish the task that I'm doing. Cause I know that the other person needs me. <laughs> Definitely. And let's think about what we're actually teaching our children and our coworkers. You know, do we mm-hmm. want to teach them moms are available anytime, all the time, and you can run right over them with your own priorities. That it's okay to treat moms and women and parents like that. Yeah. I don't think so. Our you parents know. were not like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> my parents, Very rarely. No, my parents, were, they're not available. Not yeah. available, but not available. Your own desires don't matter, that your own priorities don't matter. Even as a boss, you want to be the person that's just doing everything for everybody all the time? That's not being a good leader. Okay, well, speaking of work, what I get a decent amount of, I work with a lot of women in corporate and I would say 25-ish percent of my clients struggle with saying no to extra stuff. One of the things that I teach them to do is just the simple pause before they answer. And I'm like, you don't, I'm not asking you to say no, like let's practice just 
pausing, take a few beats before you answer. So you think about it without, you know, just automatically saying yes. So can, can you talk to us? I know you, I know your part of your work is around how to tactfully say no to extra work when you're put on the spot. So can you tell us about that? Yeah. And this is something I really had to work on because I have like a big red button in the middle of my chest that says, I'll help. Oh God. <laughs> I don't even ask have to me. wait. Somebody doesn't even have to ask me. I'll be like, oh, oh, you're moving. I'll help. Oh, you need to, I'll help. I'll help. Like, oh my God, I'm old. I don't know if people move anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a truck. Like, what? A truck. <laughs> I can't lift heavy things. No. <laughs> so I think the pause is excellent. And and what I uh, what I like to do is when anybody asks me almost really almost anything is to say, thank you so much for thinking of me. Let me insert appropriate phrase here. Let me check my calendar. Mm -hmm. and get back to you this afternoon. Let me check with my spouse and get back to you after the weekend. Let me check my pocketbook and see if that's really in the budget right now. So you're not saying yes, you're not saying no. You're saying, let me check my resources. So you're buying yourself more time. You're buying yourself more time. And what I found is that when you come back to people and you say, thank you so much for thinking of me, I'm sorry, I'm not available for that. They tend to sort of go, okay. Mm -hmm. Because they know you thought about it, right? Yeah. And you can even say, thank you so much for thinking of me. I'm not available now. Please ask me again later. You know, yeah, if you're like, like oh, one. well, you're going to miss out on some opportunity. You say, please ask me again next time. I would love to do this. I just can't right now. Or, you know what? Thank you so much for thinking of me. This really isn't my bag. So take me off your list for this kind of thing. Because if you just say no in the moment, here's the problem is if you just say no in the moment, you know, if they say, oh, you know, Sam, can you, you know, help with the bake sale this weekend? Which was there ever a worse use of time? <laughs> And <laughs> in a bake sale, like really, can't God. we think of something better? Anyway, and I say, oh, I'm, I'm so, you know, thank you, I'm not available for that. And they go, really? Are you sure? Because Andrew's going to be there, and Amy's going to be there. It's going to be so fun, and we really need you. And your brownies are the best. And please, 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 please. and then I'll just cra- I'll cave. Of course, I'll cave. Uh huh. Right. So if you say no, right, no, right in the moment, they'll keep pushing. But if you say that's a, that sounds great, let me think about that and get right back to you. Even let me call you back in five minutes. Uh huh. You know, You're less likely to push. They know you've thought about it. They're less likely to push. You also talk about mental and physical clutter, which I feel like are two in the same, but also two very different things. Mm. What is your advice for people who feel like they have a lot of both? So my thing with clutter has to do with stagnancy. Okay. I don't care if you have a lot of stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm by myself. I'm a big fan of stuff. Mm-hmm, same. I love, I love I love stuff. stuff. Mm-hmm. I love stuff. And I love paper. I have giant piles of paper everywhere on my desk. So do I. <laughs> Post-its, notebooks, tissues. Yeah. Lavender legal pads, oh, lots of tissues. <laughs> I use paper folders like I'm in sixth grade. Like, yeah, so do I. I, I, just, I don't know if this is a Gen X thing or what, but yeah, old school. Yeah. I, I, I'm seriously considering getting a trapper keeper. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Go back, uh, throw back. But I don't mind having a lot of paper as long as it stays in motion. Okay. As long as I'm moving through those piles on a fairly regular basis, so it's not always the same pile. Okay. It's a it's it's in movement. I think of it like a river, right? Like I spent a summer as a whitewater river guide, which is the so best. Your job next part, mm-hmm. yeah, the best job of all time. <laughs> The way you navigate a river is you go down the, the the tongue of the river through the flow of it, right? So you're you're there letting the current carry you along. You try not to get caught in the eddies yeah. alongside. The eddies are or those whirlpools along the side where things get stuck, mm-hmm. right? So that's what I think of when I think of clutter. I think, what are the eddies? Where are the those piles that are just permanent piles? And what are the, and inside for mental, what are the thought patterns that are just like an eddy that just are a whirlpool that just suck you right down mm. every single time. There's no movement. There's no growth. There's no light. There's no air. Nothing changes. Those are the things that concern me. Okay. Yeah. So a couple things to tag on to that. I, I love that perspective around the piles. You know, it's fine for you to have piles as long as they're in movement. So what I do as I look around my desk <laughs> at papers, I, and I don't know if this is an ADHD thing, but I've heard that we tend to keep things around because we know if we put them away, it's as if they don't exist. Oh, if things and go in the door, they die. hundred percent. Right, right, right. They go there to die. So like, for instance, I'm looking at a paper thing because I know I need to go online and create an account for one of my kids for this thing. So I know that's, it's almost like it's a to-do list with like, and there's not very many, they don't make me crazy. But when they do start to make me crazy, 
I put them in a folder, just like we said, like I have this folder. I know you guys can't see it because it's not, it's not on video, but it says miscellaneous notes. And it's just, it's literally that it's miscellaneous notes, but I'll tell you what, when I need to find something and it's very miscellaneous topic, I know where to find it. It's in that folder. And that way it's just not scattered all over my desk, which it could be. And, there's a, and sometimes I'll go through it and like throw away or put away things that I just don't need anymore. So that's, I have found that to be helpful. And then the the mental clutter that you talked about, that's why, and I know I'm an evangelist right now, you guys, but those are the things that you mentioned, you know, the eddies that you get kind of caught in. That's why I started doing psychedelic therapy because I was like, that's the stuff I need to like, uh, get it out into the, the river yeah, because it's tough. It'll stay stuck in there and it's tough to shake it loose. And I also want to suggest that again, the 15 minute thing can really help. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you've got some stuck pile that you, you, because here's the other thing, this things become sort of just background noise, right? We stop noticing things after a while. Yeah. They become like part of the furniture that you get used to in your house. Right. Exactly. The exercise bike covered with clothes, like Mm -hmm. you just don't see it anymore. So just set your timer for 15 minutes or put on a song Mm -hmm. and just spend a couple of minutes clearing a few things off that thing. Yeah. And then do it again tomorrow and do it again the next day. And I bet after two days, it'll be clear. And same thing with your mental stuckness. Like if you've got something that someone said to you and you know how that is, like even years ago, and it still hurts you, it still sticks in your craw. You still think about it. Like spend 15 minutes doing a little journaling about it or make a doodle or make up a song about it or do a dance or whatever, however it is you like to process your emotions. Do that thing just for a minute. We're not, I'm not saying go on a three month mountain climbing retreat to explore the deepest recesses of yourself. I'm saying take a minute, take five minutes, 15 minutes to just go, God, this still bothers me. Why does this still bother me? And let's just go a little bit deeper, a little bit wider, get a little bit more input, something. Mm-hmm. Okay. We need to take a quick ad break. And when we get back, I want to I want to say one more thing about that because I love it. I'll be right back. <laughs> Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers inline and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug-and-play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash noise, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash noise to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash noise. Today's podcast is sponsored by Midi Health. Ladies, are you over 40 like me and dealing with hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, moodiness, some vaginal dryness, or weight gain? Don't just accept it as part of aging. These symptoms are often linked to hormonal changes during perimenopause and menopause. At Midi Health, they get it. Their experts know what you're going through and how to help. Midi clinicians are menopause specialists offering safe, effective, FDA-approved solutions. And guess what? Midi Care is covered by insurance. So stop pushing through it alone. Schedule a virtual visit and dive deep into your unique symptoms and health background. You'll walk away feeling heard and with a plan to start feeling better. Visit Midi Health today and reclaim your well-being. You deserve to feel great. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com. That's joinmidi.com. Joinmidi.com. I have definitely been in that place where my paycheck ran out before the next one got here. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck, then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. 
Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. You can use Earnin to pay for a girl's night out, a last minute gift for a loved one, or even summer camp for the kids. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R. N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in noise under podcast when you sign up. It really, really helps the show. Noise under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. <laughs> Okay, we're back. And I, I love what you were saying before the, the break about just setting a timer. And I think we're both like literally set a timer, you guys. This is how I write books because I will get stuck in the the monumental task of it. And I don't even, I'm not even obsessing on, oh my God, I have to write a whole book that has 70,000 words in it. How on earth am I going to do that? I even think like, how am I going to write this whole chapter? This chapter is... 2000 words it feels like a you know it feels like 200,000 it's just too much so that's what i do i actually set a timer for 30 minutes because i will just like scroll on my phone and like yeah. maybe the answers are on instagram <laughs> they're not i've looked i've spent hours you guys they're not so, sure? okay. and i have to put my phone over away i go just plug it in on the other side of the room and it's amazing how much i can get done in 30 minutes so I run a daily practicum, right? Mm -hmm. 15 minutes a day, every day at 12 noon Eastern, nine Pacific. We get on Zoom, say, hi, everybody. Take a deep breath. I start the timer 15 minutes later and everybody turns off their camera. Some people leave their camera on. I leave mine on. We all work on whatever for 15 minutes. And again, I say work, but you know, some people go and you know prune their house plants or sit in the sunshine. Or some kind of task, yeah. Something that they, that's, again, that matters to them. Okay. I don't care if it matters to anybody else, but 15 minutes on something that you would maybe not otherwise do for you, mm -hmm. right? 15 minutes of writing, 15 minutes of whatever. And then the timer goes off and they turn their cameras back on and they all have this like post-orgasmic glow. <laughs> like everyone is like, oh my gosh, I got so much done. Oh my God. I made that phone call that I've been putting off for a week. Oh my yeah. gosh. I, I tackled that thing. I called that person. I, I wrote a thank you note that I've been meaning to write for six months. I, you know... Like, yes, it's shocking what you can get done in 15 minutes. It's shocking what you can get done in 15 minutes every day for a week, a month, a year. It's shocking what can happen when you know you've got a time limit, when you know you've got some support, you know, when there's, when you know, sort of mommy's going to be there too, you know, we're all doing it together. You know, it's very supportive for all the neurospices. How do people, is that something like in one of your programs? How do people get on that Zoom? It is, they can, you can buy it. It's, you can, it's a subscription. You can, it's like, okay. yeah, you know, it's like, you know, I don't know, hundred bucks a month or something. And, and you just get a Zoom link every day. And you can, some people are there every day. Some people come once a week. Some people never come, but they, but just having the reminder reminds them like, oh, I can't make that particular time, but I'm going to set that time aside, you know, at a, at a time that works for me. I mean, it's amazing. I'm like, really? <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's incredible what happens when you create a container for yourself to say, okay, this is this and it's nothing else. What advice do you have for someone who, you know, likes the idea of that, but they want to try to start doing it themselves, like creating new routines? Because we all know how it can be challenging to start a new habit and, and schedule. So people that feel like, oh, I have, I have no extra time in my day, Sam Bennett, like, how do people, what's the best way for people to do that, to, to, to figure it out and find a way? Um, I kind of have to call bullshit because, mm -hmm. you know, I have no time in my day. Oh, my job needs me. My kids need me. The people need me. Not for 15 minutes. They don't. Yeah. You know, like you're special, but you're not that special. You're <laughs> needed, but you're not that needed. Like it's okay. And, and it's one of the reasons why it's 15 minutes. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, you read the articles on the Instagram all the time that are like, well, you should work out four hours a week. I'm like, really? What for? Would you like to find those four hours for me? Because that would be awesome. <laughs> That's a big chunk. Um, yeah. It's a big chunk. 15 minutes. I can find 15 minutes, though. 
I can find 15 minutes. So that's part of it. It's like, get real with yourself. We're just talking about 15 minutes. It sort of hopscotches right over your perfectionism because it's only 15 minutes. How perfect is it going to be? You're going to do it again tomorrow, you know? And this, the real thing that I want to call bullshit on is this self-sufficiency disorder. Say more about that. I think I can do it myself. I know what I need to do. I just need to make myself do it. Like Uh it's a willpower issue. It's not a willpower issue. You have plenty of willpower. Willpower is not not, not in play here. What's happening is you, yeah, you've convinced yourself that you need to do this all by yourself. And if you could have, you would have. You've done a million other things, right? So it's not a criticism. This is not a failure. You just need some extra support in some way. So do whatever motivates you. If you can promise yourself a treat at the end of 15 minutes, say like, I'm gonna, yeah, whatever your treat is, you know, I'm going to work on my, on my my manuscript for 15 minutes and then I'm going to scroll Instagram for 15 minutes and mm-hmm. that'll be my treat. Or I'll buy those shoes or I'll, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. call my friend or whatever. Um, you know, do the things to, you know, I'm going to do it for, I'm going to put on this music, this album that I love. And that's going to motivate me to, do that thing for 15 minutes. What a, but quit tricking it. You're, quit convincing yourself that the way you've been doing it is going to somehow start working. Yeah. <laughs> that you just need to try harder. Oh, Lord. No, you need to try less hard. You need to yes. make it easier on yourself. You need to try less hard. I I agree with that. Yeah, it's it's crazy what a little tweak in your former methods will do. Yep. And I want to kind of circle uh, circles back a little bit to the the daily noon Eastern time Zoom meetings that you have. So I recently, as we're recording this, I'm still in it teaching a, a journaling class and it's, you know, very casual. Um, just, you know, we're, we're, we meet once a week on Zoom and, and talk about journaling and I give prompts and things. It's, it's nothing like super serious. And during our intro call, I asked people like, kind of like, what brought you here? Like, what are you hoping to get out of the program? And I would say like 80% of them said, I just want to kickstart my journaling again. Or even if I just do it for six weeks, that's enough. I know that if I, you know, carve the time out, pay the money, make the commitment to this program with other people there on the call and a guide, which is me, that I'll I'll get it done. And sure enough, they're journaling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, we're social animals. We're tribal yeah. animals. We're designed to live in a group, right? So we care very much about the good opinion of the group. We don't want to be a slacker. So if if, if that motivates you, then then put yourself in it. If settings, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, people don't do things because honestly, they don't really care about doing them. It bores the ass off them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, cross it off the list. This is, this is what I'm saying. And the, the real thing, and I'm sure your journaling people are, who are so lucky to be working with you, by the way, are feeling this too, of like, eventually the the pleasure mechanism kicks in. Mm -hmm. And once you've sort of gone over the mountain of like, oh, I have to sort of mm, set up a structure to encourage me to do this. Like all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm really loving doing this. Oh my God, you couldn't take this away from me. For you know, No, I have to do this every day. This is an important part of my routine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got like that about working out for a while, for a long time where I was like, oh, try and stop me. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> we're gonna pry this out of my hands. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Slightly shifting gears here. And I know that you know you come from a creative background in acting and and you know, written many books and are you know, a writer and things like that. And you work with a decent amount of creatives. Do you find that, you know, when you talk about quote unquote productivity, because there are people listening who, you know, the creativity is not something that's like at the top of their list right now. Sure. I truly believe everybody's creative. However, for them, you know, it's probably more about like checking off tasks. That's that's more of a priority for them. But quick caveat, like what I have found in, especially like these corporate women that I work with, it ends up coming up, you know, it ends up coming up like I used to paint and I don't anymore. Or yeah. I really, um, I had one client who had downloaded, she had purchased some software for her iPad and she's a digital artist and just hadn't used it. And so it's yeah. like these, I'll, I'll, I'll see these little snippets of the creative part of them that is kind of knocking on the door, like, hello, do you remember me? And they, 
they know it's important, but they're like, I'm not going to give it a priority. Do you find that to be the case with a lot of people that you work with? And, and if so, like, what do you, what is your advice for them? What's your encouragement? Yeah. So yes, a hundred percent. That's, it's, it's really the only reason people come to me. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what I okay. thought, but I just want to make yeah. sure. Yeah. And I will just want to underline something you said. Everyone is creative. Mm-hmm. Not everyone is artistic. Okay. Yeah. Those are There's different. been a little collapsement in our language between the words creative and artistic. And they're two different things, right? Some people are artistic. Some people are not, but everyone is creative and everyone has at least one zone of creative genius. Your zone of creative genius is the thing that you do naturally, that you've always been interested in, that you've always been good at. And maybe it's coding apps. Maybe it's tying flies. Maybe it's knowing exactly what to say to someone when they're upset. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's interior decoration. Maybe it's, I don't know, you know, it's, maybe it's logistics. My mom and I were just talking about that the other day about how the women in our family have such a great ability to go, oh, well, if we're having dinner at seven, then we need to be here by six and we got to do this at seven. Therefore, I am now doing this task right now. Like we can reverse engineer anything and make okay. it work. Okay. Okay. So, so I've never had a job in corporate America. I've had every other job. Mm-hmm. Whitewater River Guide, scarf tying demonstrations at Lord Taylor. <laughs> Waiting <Barista>. tables. Mm-hmm. <laughs> everything, everything. Mime at children's birthday party, everything. Were uh, you really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm, I'm making a glass box right now. And I always joke that like, I don't know what they do in corporate America. I see those big buildings and those industrial parks and I drive by and I feel like I can hear them crying. But, oh, but a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. And what I notice is that when you spend, whoever you are, when you spend 15 minutes a day on something that matters, again, to you, something that you're good at, something that brings you joy, that, that the accomplishment of it makes you go, oh, look at that. I did that. Mm-hmm. That's good your whole day gets better. There is a spillover effect of smugness, mm-hmm. <laughs> of pride, of self-ownership, a little hair toss, hair toss of like, yeah, that's right. It's like, you, it's the same when, like, when you work out in the morning, yeah. when you get in the morning and you're just walking to work like, <laughs> thanks very much. I'm here. How are you? <laughs> bet my morning was better than yours. I bet yes. my morning was better than yours. <laughs> and, and that, and just that 15 minutes can bring a person to life a little bit. I never thought of it that way. We need to take one more break. When we get back, I want to comment on that. Be right back. Fast forward to the end of 2024 and think about your goals. What can you do right now to give yourself the best chance of succeeding? If you want to learn a new language, you absolutely should get Babbel. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. One study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. Now it's so easy to speak simple conversation phrases with the guy that takes care of my lawn without having to consult language apps. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash noise. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash noise, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash noise. Rules and restrictions may apply. You know when you're listening to a song on the radio and you get the profound feeling that the song playing was written about you? Now imagine having the power to gift that same incredible feeling to someone you love with an original song from Songfinch that actually is written just for them. Songfinch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life and the people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and lasts forever. Whether your song is for Father's Day, an upcoming graduation, wedding, or anniversary, or even just a gift to show your loved one how much you care, start your song now to lock in one of Songfinch's top artists. I gifted Songfinch to myself, a song about my late father, and I'm so excited to play you a clip. Flipping through the slides of learning how to live and how to love And coming undone a father-daughters without So she writes it down 
One of my clients heard about Songfinch from this podcast, and so she had a song created for her son who was graduating, and she told me that they both cried when she played it for him and that it exceeded her expectations. For a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free so you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere, anytime. Go to songfinch.com slash noise and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming for your original song for free, a $50 value. Again, my URL is songfinch.com slash noise. Don't forget to share your song with us too. songfinch.com slash noise. I'd like to introduce you to the Minimalist Moms podcast. It's hard enough being a mom, and the last thing you need is stress from too much stuff and an overcrowded schedule. For too long, I lived with the mindset that bigger was better, and the more I added to my life, instead of feeling better, I felt overwhelmed. It was time for a radical new mindset. Less is more. I'm not into extremes. I didn't throw everything away. My brand of minimalism is more about adding than subtracting. Get rid of the excess to make room for what you love. In other words, it's about living life with purpose. I hope you'll listen in and my guest and myself can inspire you to think more and do with less. The Minimalist Moms Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay, and and this actually brings me to a question I have for you because do you find that, because I I do think there's a decent amount of people listening who are creative for their work, for the thing that they do for a living, whether they love the job or don't love it so much, but they do have the opportunity to be creative. And do you find that that isn't the same thing? Like it doesn't check off the same box as them doing the 15 minutes a day for themselves? That's an interesting question. I'm not sure. I'd love to actually hear from your listeners about that. I found it to be the case for me. Like I, when it's when it's my job, when like people are relying, like if I'm writing a book and like people are relying on me for it, you know, publishers, my agent, my, you know, my listeners, et cetera, the internet, et cetera, et cetera. I don't get as much, I get a lot of creative satisfaction from it, but I get a lot more when I am journaling for myself and like writing about all my feelings and emotions that probably no one is going to see. And it's some of my best work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the distinctions I make, because as you say, I made my living as an as an actor for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I noticed about acting is while the work can be very challenging, it is in general very energizing. You know, mm-hmm. I don't feel tired while I'm doing it. I feel tired at the end of the day because you're tired at the end of every day, no matter what you're doing. Sure. Right? So you're living. Because mm-hmm. you're living. <laughs> so, oh, that life. Yes. Uh, so tiring. But a lot of those creative tasks actually give us energy, right? But when you have to commodify mm-hmm. your artist, your art, yeah, that can be tiring. That can be more draining. And I definitely talk to a lot of people who are like, well, I'm lucky because I have a career in graphic design, or I have a career as a voiceover artist, or I have a career, you know, in many ways doing what I love. And I still have projects inside of me, a voice inside of me, work inside of me that I just want to that I really want to spend some time on and bring out into the world. And again, notice that when you do that, it energizes everything else. Okay. It breathes new life into to other things. I'll tell you a thing I read not too long ago. If you, if you're having a meeting, say, so here we are in corporate, we're having a meeting and uh, you have everybody introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sam from sales. And then you have them say something about themselves. That's not work related. Hi, my name is Sam. My grandmother was Swedish. You know, she emigrated here from Sweden and I love to bake sourdough bread. I don't know, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. right? So say two things about yourself. Now, first of all, we start to build some of that social web more. Mm -hmm. We start to look like, oh my gosh, my grandfather was Norwegian. Oh my gosh. You know, like we just have that little, oh, you're a person. Oh yeah, I'm a person too, Mm -hmm. right? I love, oh, sourdough. I've never tried that. How is it, right? But also, and here's what the study said, you will get better results from those people. They will have better ideas. They will be more sparked up. They will listen better. They will respond more fully because you have reminded them of their full personhood. Of their humanness. They're not just Sam from sales. They're Mm -hmm. Sam with a whole lifetime of experience behind them. But now all of a sudden they sort of have some mental permission to bring to the table. That's fascinating. I wonder if it also, it's... 
It makes me curious because I, I love brain science. I geek out on it. It must light up a different part of their brain and the mirror neurons start happening with other people. That's exactly right. And it, and I think the opposite happens. If I say you're this person and you only fit in this role and you can only do and say these things because this is who you are, mm -hmm. we start to feel very constricted and small and our thoughts right. get small and our personal space bubble gets small and we're bored to tears. And, you know, that kind of regimentation and restriction feels really awful to us. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it becomes impossible to have new ideas. It becomes impossible to think new thoughts because you've been put in such a tiny, tiny box. It's really about humanizing people, I think, to some extent. Like, that's what that is. I love that so much. Before we wrap up, I want to make sure that people know exactly, because when I said, you know, do you work with these types of people, the corporate people who who, who struggle, um, wh who is this book exactly for? The 15-Minute Method, The Surprising Simple Art of Getting It Done. Yeah, if you are anyone who finds yourself using the word overwhelm, busy, procrastinating, mm -hmm. um, exhausted. If these words are showing up a lot in your daily conversation about yourself, try this book. And I want to put a little asterisk here. I wrote this book. I've had long haul COVID for the last two and a half years. You have. That's true. Right. So for those of you who don't know, long haul COVID is what happens when people get COVID and then they don't get better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a whole thing. I'm not going to get into it now. But part of what it is is extreme exhaustion. Mm -hmm. It's actually chronic fatigue, right? Part of it is. So I literally wrote this book in 15 minutes a day. I wrote this book in part to save myself from my genuine physical inability to do more than 15 minutes. Yeah. So, and I felt very overwhelmed and very, you know, I was just watching the rest of my life slide by like, well, I guess I'm not doing any of that because I can't get out of bed. Mm -hmm. So there goes that. Um, and as a person who'd always been able to power through, who'd always been able to rely on my own energy, my own will, my own, like, I will make tenacity. this happen, oh, damn it, mm -hmm. my own tenacity, all of a sudden I did not have that tool. And so it's, yeah, it started because my editor said, would you consider writing a book on overwhelm? And I said, yes, because overwhelm is one of those problems that seems like an outside problem, but it's actually an inside problem. I want to say just like one more thing, and I don't know if you wrote about this or not, but the when I get overwhelmed, there's a couple of things that I do is I tell myself, well, it's all going to get done eventually. You know, like it, it's kind of like the when my kids ask me, like, when are we going to get there? It's like, we're going to get there when we get there. Mm -hmm. And please trust me when I tell you, it took me a long time to be able to not only say that to myself and and believe it and just like let go, but in terms of the overwhelm, because it feels like everybody needs me right now. I'm going to let people down yeah. if I don't do it on time. I think that for me was the underlying thing of like disappointing people and and just really looking at, okay, like, am I doing my best with, you know, where I am in my life? Because sometimes, you know, sometimes you're you you really do have too much for one person. It's, you know, if you're going through like an emotional time and sure. yeah, it'll just, it'll, it, it's all going to get done eventually. <laughs> or it won't. And I noticed that the earth has not stopped spinning because you didn't get or the Or it won't. Or it won't. You know, I mean, again, any, whatever the spiritual lessons of this illness have been for me, unhooking my self-worth from my doing mm -hmm. has been fairly epic, you know, because I always put a lot of value. I think we all do of like, well, I'm, I, I, it's okay for me to be on the planet because I'm doing because of what yeah. I do because of what I contribute because of, and I just want to reassure everyone listening. You all are doing great. You're doing amazing. Fantastic. You have amazing lives. People love you. You have relationships. You look fantastic. And I can prove it to you because if I took a picture of you today and showed it to you 20 years from now, you'd go, oh, my God, I look amazing. So, <laughs> what a beauty. What a beauty. I had no idea. Uh -huh. Right. So and I, all I want is just for you to honor yourself and your own desires and your own inclinations and just follow those little sparkly breadcrumbs in your mind of things you're curious about or things you're interested in or things you're good at or things you love to do. And only for 15 minutes a day, I'm not saying 
15 hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you have to, you know, move to Tibet or get divorced or lose 50 pounds or do anything. I'm just saying, take 15 minutes for something, anything mm-hmm. that matters to you inside of you. That's it. Just 15 minutes. I would love to to end on that. I, I, I do want to say one more thing though, because here's the question that I get from people sometimes, not, not super often, but sometimes is they'll tell me that spiel, like of, I feel overwhelmed. I feel like if I am not doing everything and checking off the boxes, then da, 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 da. very common, I think with women, with high achieving women. And then they'll say, I have no idea where this came from. And I always say like, I my, you know, like I don't know what your family life was like. I don't know what kind of pressure, no pressure your parents put on you. But I do know that if you grew up over here in the United States, I think, and Canada and countries just like us, it's an American value. Productivity. Yeah. And it, like that comes before your individualism. It comes before your creativity. It comes before your family. Like we like to say we're a quote, wink, wink, family values country. Like mm, I think productivity with a capital P comes before that. It's like, what can you do for us? And, and, and sometimes when I tell them that, I'm like, just think about it. Just, just look around. I mean, that's in order for capitalism to thrive, like we have to have that as a, as a value in our culture and in our society. So, and I say that to people just like, it's okay for you to like, accept that that's the air that you breathed your entire life. And we can work on challenging that and pushing back and like knowing that you need to rest and figuring out what life balance looks like for you. So that can be life-changing for people just to kind of connect the dots. So here's where my mind went with that is really what you're talking about is the cult of busy. Okay. And that's what you call it. I, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just made that up right now. The cult oh, okay. of busy. Um, <laughs> because what, you know, what do we, what does a cult do? A cult takes away your free will. Mm-hmm. A cult says, freedom. no, no, this matters. What you want doesn't matter. This matters. Right. And we've glorified busy. You can hear it in conversations everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. How are you? Oh my God, I'm so busy. Oh, really? You're so busy. Oh my God, I am so busy. Oh my God, I am so busy. Mm-hmm. Like, stop saying it. Stop participating in that cult. And this is one of the reasons you're right, because it is definitely a cultural thing, because there's plenty of other cultures that look at us and go, why? Americans are so weird. Yeah. Why are you so busy? Why are you not napping in the afternoon? Right. Why don't you take hours off in the afternoon? Why are you not at home having dinner at five and a glass of wine at seven? And why are you answering emails on your day off? Like that's so foreign to people. Right. Why would you bring your work computer with you on vacation? No. Like you expect to do anything in August? No, August is off. Yeah. Every other culture, every other industrialized nation gets like twice as many days off as we do. And healthcare, but anyway, um, <laughs> different conversation. For another different conversation. Yep. <laughs> um, so yes, so I encourage you, free will, make some noise, errs out mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. not get the fuck off. Just yeah. refuse to participate in the cult of busy. And when people say, "How are you?" You say, "Well rested, thank you." Yeah. How are you? Recently orgasmed. You, you know, like say, like, how are you? Glowing. How are you? Richly tailed. <laughs> Richly tailed. How are you? My peonies are gorgeous. I spent all weekend in the garden, and I love, and I just can't get over how beautiful they are. <laughs> Praise yourself. Praise your 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 the glory of care in your mm-hmm. life. Because mm-hmm. again, nobody on their deathbed looks back and says, "I wish I'd spent more time at work." I wish I'd got all those things on my to-do list checked off. I really wish my tile grout had been cleaner. <laughs> right. <laughs> no one. Yeah. It, it just, I remember one, one time somebody, cause I get a, I, I get a probably 25% of the emails or DMs that I get. They'll say like, I know you're super busy and you probably don't have time to read this. And I have replied when I was having a conversation with someone, they're like, oh, I'm sure you are just so, so busy these days. And I replied and I'm like, I'm actually not like, I have time. Like, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> I remember a million years ago, you know, and I was working like four semi part-time halftime jobs mm-hmm. and auditions and shows and projects. And, you know, I was booked 18 hours a day. And I remember reading a, a self-help book and, and the author said like, Oh yeah, I wake up, I have some tea. I do a little writing. I go in the garden. I have lunch. I take a nap. I was like, take a nap. What? Like what is that legal? Nap, like a toddler? That's amazing. Is that allowed? Yeah. What's that like? 
I I nap almost every day. I've had periods in my life where where I did. I just can't, I just don't. I'm not a good napper anymore. But I know that I will come into a period of my life where it will come easier for me, and I will do it. And I and I want to say too, like and I think this is probably pretty common. Like I go through period seasons. I'll have a season of yes. a lot, like you were just mentioning, like booked every day, and it's just like from thing to thing to thing. And now it's it's just different now. And I'm, you know, I'm sure I'll be back there. And there's definitely sprints. Well, and this is one of the other things about the 15 minutes things, because as you were saying, you know, people, we have times in our lives where it's really easy to do X, Y, Z, you know, we're just yeah. in the group of it, or it's somehow facilitated by the environment we have. And then things change, and we fall out of it, like, oh, all of a sudden, I have a child or, oh, all mm-hmm. of a sudden, you know, things change. So this is the beauty of the 15 minutes thing. It's like, okay, great. So you want to get back to reading a novel because you used to love to read and now you hardly ever have time to read or painting or doing crossword puzzles or whatever. Experiment. Take that 15 minutes to experiment with, well, what does facilitate that for me? Okay. What, how can I get back in the groove of that if I want to? Or am I willing to say like, okay, that's fine that I'm not doing that right now. That. Uh, that's not so meaningful for me right this red hot second and just g- allow yourself the freedom to really d- screw it up do it poorly yeah make mistakes play the key word is experiment experiment mm-hmm. that's what i and, talk to a lot of my clients about yeah just try to see what happens it's only 15 minutes i know right <laughs> you're not gonna blow up your life in 15 minutes it's fine no no <laughs> Although, I don't know. I've definitely tried. <laughs> <laughs> this, it depends on which 15 minutes we're talking about. But yeah. I, I have some moments. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I could talk to you all day. I'm I'm so glad to have you on. So everyone, the book is The 15-Minute Method, The Surprisingly Simple Art of Getting It Done by Sam Bennett. And we'll have, of course, all those links in the show notes. Is there anything that you want to say or go back and underscore before we go in order for you to feel complete? For all of you who are sitting here thinking to yourself right now, that's a great idea. I should totally try that sometime. I really urge you to do it now. Like right this second. Right this second. You know, like if you're driving somewhere, pull off. And just take 15 minutes to sit and even make a list of 15 minute activities. Mm-hmm. You know, what are some things you might like to try? You know, just hit the pause button for yourself and tune in to what do you want for you? What's going to make a difference for you? Yeah. Because you're the one who matters in your life. Other people matter too, but you matter most. Hooray, bravo. Thank you so much. I've loved this conversation. And everyone, if you want to hear more of Sam, head on over to the links in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so grateful for your time. I know that it's very, very precious as we just talked about. So thank you for spending it with me and my guests today. And remember, it's our life's journey to make ourselves better humans and our life's responsibility to make the world a better place. Bye for now. Hey everyone, thanks again for listening. I would be so incredibly grateful if you haven't done so already, if you could leave a review of this podcast on Apple Podcasts. Super easy if you already listen to your shows over there. Um, But if you don't, or maybe you have the app on your phone, but you listen to this show on a different app, if you could leave a review for this show, it matters so much. I wish I could express how much it matters. I also wish that it didn't matter so much, but alas, it does. So if you haven't already, please go review and rate the show. It would mean so much to me. And thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing day. Hey there, I'm Debbie Reber, the founder of Tilt Parenting and the author of the book, Differently Wired. The mission of Tilt is to change the way neurodivergence, whether that's having a learning disability, having ADHD, being gifted, autistic, or some combination of all of the above, is perceived and experienced so differently wired kids and the parents like us raising them can truly thrive. On the Tilt Parenting podcast, I get to talk with authors, therapists, educators, and parenting experts who are committed to this mission. I ask the questions my listeners are most curious about when it comes to supporting our kids. And in turn, my guests share strategies for challenges, out-of-the-box ideas for navigating school, best practices for therapies, 
tips for advocating, and so many thoughtful insights on what it really takes to help our kids grow up feeling seen and respected so they can create awesome lives for themselves. I know that raising a differently wired kid can feel overwhelming and isolating, but I promise you, you are not alone and it can feel so much better. If you're on this parenting journey, come listen to Tilt Parenting. Together, we can shift this paradigm and show up for our exceptional kids with hope, possibility, and joy. 